The road she traveled. Honoring women who made a difference. A cool kids gift to our community. Welcome to the personal interview with Barbara Schultz, conducted on April 26 by Amy, part two. If you could go back in time and change one thing about the or what about what you did or about somebody about someone else day, what would it be? If I could change one thing. If I could change one thing in all of the years that I've been teaching, I guess it would be that I would like to see all students have an equal opportunity. In other words, where it wouldn't matter how much money somebody had, they would all have. We try to make that happen, but I don't think that it's always as successful as it might be. And we all like be equal or what? As far as your opportunities, not only at this level of education, but later on, going oh, to college. So you're talking so about on. family. Yeah. And the other thing is I would like, I would wish for all students that their family situation again would be good and it isn't always that way. Um, for the family situation, what do you think was one of the worst memories you've had of a child in a situation? I think the worst memory was a suicide. And why did the child do a suicide? I think the child just basically gave up, had not wanted to be living in the current situation and became frustrated when nothing was done for her and I'm not sure she intended to kill herself, but she did. How did she kill herself? She hanged herself. Was this one of the hardest times for you? In yeah, it was very difficult. Did you know her? Very well. What made you want to be like the help you, like president of the committees and then like was there anything that you really wanted that made you? Well, I don't know that I set out to be president, but it it happened at the time I started becoming president that no one else was running. And I had been on all, all kinds of committees and had the experience, so I was convinced to run. What, I'm sorry, I'm going back to suicide here, but what was her, what is like the most common family situation that she had and the other kids have usually? Well, I think a lot of times it can be, you know, the family has kind of broken up and Sometimes there are alcohol and drug problems that can affect certain students. Is there a time in the, like you were trying to like help the committee that you just thought like you couldn't do it anymore because it was just too hard? Well, I think I can't, became tired from working on committees. I mean, when we negotiated, we, we would negotiate until 3, 4 in the morning and then get up and go to school and be here by 7 o'clock. So that would become frustrating and tiresome. But I I managed. What do you, when you were on the committees, what do you think changed the most in it for like teachers and education? Well, I think that our education system became one of the finest, if not the finest in the state because of the hard work of the teachers. So that's come a long ways from the time in the early 70s when we were sanctioned for not doing a good job education-wise. So that's the biggest change that I've seen. Um, how, how long did it take for us to get our reputation back up for the state? Oh boy. I would guess it took about 10 years to get it at least going well and then as I say we became a middle school at that time. What was the hardest like what was the hardest thing to change in the community area? Well I don't know probably one of the things is the attitude toward the schools on the part of the community 
um, certainly having a standard curriculum. In other words, what we teach being the same here as it was across town at Lincoln or at Logan. And earlier on, there wasn't anything. You just kind of did your own thing as a teacher. What is the testing situation right now? Well, the, the testing situation that we have with being tested every year in 6th grade, 7th grade, 8th grade is part of uh, No Child Left Behind law. And a lot of teachers don't necessarily agree that that's the best thing because what often happens then is that many are trying to teach to the test so that their students do well. And I'm not saying locally that happens, but there's a lot of competition based on that test and the scores that we, we have come out of it. I am not a protesting person. I just don't care that much for standardized testing. I think we need to check to see where our students are, but every year to be testing takes an incredible amount of time and also takes a lot of money that takes away from other resources. And part of that other money be um, used to this education, to education? Certainly, it could be. It could be used for materials, for teaching, and other things for students. What thing, what do you, what things do you think we could give up and then use a more positive way to the education? What could we give up that we currently do? Yeah, that we have that would bring more money to us to use in a more positive way. That's a tough one. Because I, I feel that the classes that you take are really important. So for me to say, well, let's just give this up or give that up, I don't know. Or like an object or something? I really don't know what I'd, I'd say should be given up because I, I don't know that we have anything that is a luxury. I think, you know, most everything is kind of bare bones basic. And what do you think could be changed in these committees like today? Uh, probably more active involvement on the part of our younger teachers. I don't think that they necessarily see the need or have the time to be involved in committees. And I think that's going to be important. Do you think that you guys need to make the committees more fun and more that to get people more like interested? I think we need to get the message across how important it is to be involved. I don't know that you're going to make them more fun. Some of the things are just not fun. They're hard work. But there are, you know, there are positives. You get to meet new people, mm -hmm. and that's fun. What committees are you still on today? I'm on some of the community committees yet. I'm on one of the committees for Big Brother, Big Sister. What's um, that about? Big Brother, Big Sister, yeah. where they, <laughs> they find a big brother or a big sister for a young person that may just need a friend. A national group. I'm also on, well, I'm in a band and I'm on that uh, board. I know I'm on other things, but I can't. Oh, I, one very important one the Cross Public Education Foundation. I'm on the board of that. That's the group that gives the money for the venture grants, and your teachers each just got a venture grant. Um, I have a question. Project. Can't you have people from other foundations or businesses to donate money to the education? You can certainly try, Sorry. yes. And some do. Couldn't you go on like this big, like, I don't know, like, um, big theme or something and like get like a whole bunch of money to... That's an effort of the La Crosse Public Education Foundation actually right now working on something like that to bring the money into the schools. So you can do think projects like this and buy computers. If you had to change one thing about the school, what would it be? About this school? Yeah. Or other schools in this area, I guess. 
for me personally, it would probably be having more time to sit down with small groups of students. And I would do, for example, in the past, like 13 different support groups each week. And now it doesn't seem like there's time to do that. Nobody wants to give up their students for any, any length of time. Well, don't you think we could have like a lot more teachers and then each teacher could have like 10 kids or something? <laughs> that would be ideal, yeah. But I don't think that's likely to happen. Because then they'd have to pay money to yes. those teachers. And they're doing something like that at the elementary school with the support of the state. It's called SAGE where they have only like 15 students per teacher for kindergarten through third grade or whatever. But again, I think they're finding that they can't afford that. Well, how can't they still have teachers and then find a way to get more money? I mean... There's only so much money and everybody wants a little chunk of it. That's the problem. Uh, and then what do you think you changed in the education? Before you like left so most of the committees and being president committees, yeah. What did I change? Yeah, that's so positive. Probably something that I said before, and that is the relationship between people. I like to think that I made change of how we treated each other. How was it used to be? How was it? How was it before? It was pretty hostile. What does that mean? It means people treated each other like enemies. Oh, they weren't very nice to each other. Yeah. Why do you think they did that? I think they figured that was probably the way to do it. The way to get what you wanted was to be mean to each other or be, you know, aggressive. Do you think still nowadays that men down dominate and get paid more? I, and not in our profession, I don't think they get paid more. I know that there still are a lot of professions out there where men are paid more than women. I mean, that's a national statistic. This podcast brought to you from La Crosse, Wisconsin by the Cooley Kids at Longfellow Middle School in conjunction with the League of Women Voters.